Welcome back tonight. Well, NASA plans to take the nation's next big leap into space during the overnight hours. The target right now is 104 a.m. tonight. Technically, yes, it would be tomorrow morning, but within a couple hours from now. So right now they're dealing with a small hydrogen leak. Does that sound familiar? The goal is to send astronauts back to the moon to build a lunar colony and then take off from Mars. All starts with the uncrewed Artemis 1 mission. The launch window again opens at 104 a.m. So that in theory would be the earliest they could go. Fox 13 political editor Craig Patrick, Craig Patrick joining us now as the countdown clock ticks down. Engineers working to fix the problem. Craig, I was just watching one of these tweets. Looks like uh, they do have a crew out there and they're assessing it. They're working on it. But as of right now at 1030, still a go. Is that what you understand? Well, they're working on it. It's still not uh, abandoned at this point. It hasn't been aborted, so there's a good possibility it will launch if, in fact, they resolve this issue. It sounds familiar, a uh, fuel leak, but this one is a little different. This one is in the mobile launch platform. In other words, the platform that the rocket sits on. There's a valve and there's a leak at that valve. So in layman's terms, they're tightening the nuts. This is a red team. These are special technicians on standby. Should something happen at this point in the countdown, there is a possibility they can get this resolved. I think we may have a much better idea. It should take 15 minutes or so to complete the work they're doing and then some time to assess to what extent it works. So we should know maybe by the top of the hour if in fact we are still all good to go if that resolved the issue. But again, uh, this follows a series of issues that really are not surprising given the nature of what NASA is doing here. And we sat down with one of our space pioneers from the Apollo era to kind of put these kinds of delays and issues in context. NASA developed the most powerful rocket ever built to send astronauts back to the moon. And when it hit some snags in its first launch attempt back in August, Ken Poinboeuf was not surprised. But in every program that you start brand new, you run into problems that you don't anticipate. He ought to know. He was an Apollo electronics engineer who helped build the massive Saturn V rocket that took us to the moon more than 50 years ago. And I still have vivid memories of walking on the side of one of those vehicles, looking up and thinking, my goodness, I mean, how fantastic is that? It was the most powerful rocket ever built until now, and we used it to beat the Soviets in the race to the moon, which helped us win the Cold War 22 years later, and fueled our revolution in electronics, computing, navigation, communications, and medical science. But it started with glitches and setbacks, just as we've seen the past couple of months with Artemis 1. Absolutely. We, we, we've, had, we've had issues that uh, crop up that we didn't expect which they worked through back then in what we called America's can-do spirit. Which means no matter what the problem is, we figure out a way to make it happen. Which is what NASA does from Apollo back then to Artemis today. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I, I, I can hardly wait. I, I, was, I was there at the, at the moon launch. My heart's going to be uh, pounding as it was in those days. It has much, much more potential than we had during Apollo. And he says more potential because long after Apollo in recent years, probes have discovered the existence of large loads of ice on the moon just beneath the dusty surface. Now, that is ice that can be mined and then broken up into water for drinking to sustain a permanent colony, air for drinking, and also fuel for blasting off from the moon, then on to Mars, which is why this time the plan is to send astronauts back to the moon, this time to stay, to establish a permanent colony, and then use it for much deeper missions in space. It, it is pretty amazing when you use the phrase permanent colony and Mar er, and the moon in the same sense. It's pretty neat yeah. here. Uh, let's hope they get there. Uh, let's talk about these launch windows, because I know uh, most, of, a lot of us, <laughs> just not, not most, probably most will be asleep. Uh, some of us will be able to see this tonight at 104. I know the previous launch windows did open in the morning and then afternoon. Uh, this one's obviously different. Uh, why so late? A big part of it is the position of the moon in relation to the Earth. They have to make sure that it lines up with the engineered flight path, and that only happens at certain intervals. That's part of it. And you also have to match it to the availability of sunlight, not just en route to the moon to fire off the solar arrays and feed those. You also have to have daylight or certainly want daylight for the recovery engineers when it splashes back to Earth so they can more easily see it and monitor it and retrieve it. 
Craig Patrick watching it closely for us, and we will carry this live if it happens for sure. And Craig, I know we'll check back in with you in a little bit. So uh, yeah. thanks for staying on this one for us.